Hi, my name's Leanne Hardy. I'm a Cannes based photographer and cyanotype artist and I'm really excited to uh, share with you today uh, uh, the cyanotype process. The process itself was discovered by noted British scientist and astronomer Sir John Herschel in 1842 because essentially he was a human being and he was lazy and he was tired of copying out his scientific notes and he wanted to, uh, to find a way of copying them without having to hand write them all the time. Um, so this led him on a path that where he discovered that two photosensitive salts of iron would actually um, enable him to create the original blueprint in the first instance but essentially um, a scientific based photocopier. So it, for, in terms of photography, cyanotypes are a negative uh, direct contact printing process and they render the most incredible detail, but they're also a place where um, science meets magic meets art. And this is the space that I love to really play in. Um, the other thing that I think is worthwhile mentioning about the pro process is Herschel's, one of Herschel's friend's daughters, her name was Anna Atkins, and she was really our first female photographer, and she's definitely the first female photo, photo book creator. And if you want to have a look at some really beautiful work, made around that time in the 1840s. Look up Anna Atkins and her exploration of British sea algae that there's a couple of different volumes and they're held in the um, v and Museum in, in the UK. And you can see how incredibly, um, even the most delicate objects can be rendered onto paper. Uh, we're going to make a simple card and a couple of bookmarks today um, and we're going to dry process this work. So what we'll do now is have a sneak peek at them so you can see what it looks like before they go out into the sunlight. So, so there we go and they will actually start developing. Okay so we're going to uncover now and I've got my handy timer ready and we'll uncover and you'll watch it and you'll see it'll change, start changing really quickly. So it goes from essentially like a pale yellow green and it will keep changing through the stages um, until it gets to like on this particular paper which is Han Muller um, photo paper for alternative processes. Um, it will go like a silvery kind of slaty grey colour and that's when I know it's ready. Because it's a photographic process you use the same theory I guess in terms of developing and tonal range to achieve the results. I've chosen to make the skeleton leaf because I really want you to see the level of razor sharp rendition that the process can provide. And then the grevillea because they're nice and Australian and just really quite sculptural. Sometimes like this, if it's one massive piece and it's processing unevenly, what I would actually do, I would be working like I was working in a dark room. So I might hover over and shade one part of it so it stops processing to let the other corner go, for example, here. And I'm moving it so we don't get straight lines. It's the same as working in a dark room. Because it's a chemical process, it's um, chemistry dependent and so the pH is very very important. This is just tap water and we haven't changed anything so what I've done is I'm just placing them into the water now and I'm going to turn them over so you can see. So you can see where the chemistry has been and then the leaf and you can see it's starting to develop and we'll keep rinsing until these bits of the paper are white. And you can slowly see some Prussian blue emerging. You have to be careful with paper because it's so delicate. Fabric's much more robust. Sometimes I wish the colours that you see now, like this colour, would stay, but they don't. And the white will start to emerge as we rinse. And it takes a while. 
but it's nice. I find it really relaxing. A lot of our plants here in far north Queensland are really sculptural, which is lovely. Although when I look at the European cyanotype artists who, who are working with um, on paper and, and plants and little pieces of paper, they have all these really delicate little translucent flowers and dandelions and things like that, which would be lovely. But I haven't come across too many of those here. Hibiscus are good to play with when you can get them. But just, yeah, whatever you have, whatever you feel like, just play. It's about having fun. And the detail, this is what always fascinates me about cyanotypes, is the detail that you're able to render in the process. It is a, it's a photographic process, so you actually get that photographic realism from it. It is magic. That's why I love it. It's this place where um, it's art grounded in science, really. And you can, you can be as creative as you want to be. There. And there's paper white there now. And that's what we were looking for. So that can go there. Yeah. I think we'll just leave that float around in there now. Yeah, so for me, cyanotypes are a really magical place where art meets science and for me, nature, because I choose to use the world around me, that is the plants, um, from my garden and also generous friends' gardens um, in the work. But it's just lovely because just splashing around in water, working in the dark, making the designs, being outside in nature. Um, yeah, it really connects me to nature and it's my happy place. It's just really, really um, soothing for me. And yeah, so what we'll do now is we'll do the oxidation process. I'm just gonna put a little bit of peroxide into some water. Um, just to change the pH and to oxidize it. So, okay, so in and out. This would happen naturally over a 24 hour period if we left them. And then they're done. Ta -da. Um, in terms of what you're actually going to get, it's always surprising because we're dealing with, with nature and it's beautiful. That, that's, part, that's part of the whole thing. And, and things not being perfect or how you thought they might be is actually probably the best, the best part of it. Yeah, because that's all part of discovery. And also too, learning every time. Every time I make something, I, I learn. So that's a lovely part of the process as well.